The unburied dead, the unburied dead are coming back to life. Are coming back to life. My name's Mark Warman. I'm Darren Kirkpatrick. And we get paid to bring dead cars back to life. We work with my best friend, Royal, and my son-in-law, Josh. We search far and wide to find how a car was built, where it spent its life, and how it died. After that, we bring it back to look exactly the way it did on the day it was born. If we don't kill each other. You shut your mouth before I actually punch you out. Can I leave a handprint on your face? Now that we've got a few things done, the Black Challenger's here and we're ready to start doing some documenting on that and the comparisons between that and the old one. Uh, the Daytona Charger is now here, inventoried and ready for restoration. And we have some panels off the 71 Cuda six barrel car. With these things under our belt, it's now time to really focus on finishing the 71 Charger RT six pack car. The fact is we've taken way too long on this car to get it restored, so we need to regroup and get on that car and get it out to the customer. We're assembling the 71 Dodge Charger today, um, working on the air grabber setup. It's a very intricate piece. Basically, it uses a trap door that opens up and allows cool air to get into the motor, and that increases the performance of the engine over the hot air that normally goes in. Go out and get the plenum that should be out there on the assembly bench. Let's lay out the plenum and the pieces for it. I have to find the plenum. I don't know where the plenum's at, though. I sent Josh out to the boneyard to find the original intake plenum for the six-pack setup. Here's the actual grabber scoop. Shortly thereafter, he came back in with it in his right hand and said, I can't find it. Never heard it before. Mark, I have no idea where it's at out there. Where what is? The thing in your hand? No. You're talking about the, the round circular piece. No, the plenum, which is in your hand. Score. I think Josh has lost his mind. We're putting together the air grabber system for the 71 Charger. Basically, it's a fiberglass door that's vacuum operated in the middle of the hood, and when it's open, it allows cool air into the engine compartment, which increases the performance of the engine. That lid, this component, there's a lot of pieces and components and they need to be detailed correctly. So that's what I'm focusing my attention on right now is making sure that all the pieces and components are detailed correctly and assembled correctly so that when we're done, we can put vacuum tests to it and that door should open right up. So I'm working on the interior trim panels right now. I'm putting the right-hand and left-hand quarter lower interior trim panels on, the upper garnish moldings, A-pillar moldings, and the roof rail moldings on the inside. Oh, cool. I wonder what this is out of. It certainly isn't out of this car. That's great. Who picked this part out for this car and had it painted green? It's not the windshield inside reveal molding. This is for an E-body. So that means I probably still need the right one for the B-body. The part that got painted that's the interior garnish molding for the 71 Charger was off of a Challenger, which is about two inches more narrow than a 71 to 74 B body. So when I put that up there into place, I've got an inch gap on each side of it before you hit the A-pillar reveal moldings. How's that gonna work? Today is a record hot day. It's 100 degrees right now. Humidity is 2000. I'm out there pulling the inside windshield reveal molding. Sit down in a chair that isn't bolted down. Thank you guys. It flips over backwards. What the? I move positions, I crawl back over, the, the molding hits me in the head, I get rust in my eye. God, cross-eyed, wrinkled. 
And I could come in and I could say, hey guys, don't do it again. But the fact is, I could walk in here a thousand times and say, don't do it again. And they'll do it again. Do you walk in and you tag them in the nuts with that molding like a whip? I guarantee you they will always remember that. Wiener shot? Stop. Wiener shot. Stop. That's what you get when I send you out specifically to get an interior reveal molding windshield for a 71B body and you guys come back with an E-body. Oh, really? Is that what you get? I thought you just wanted to get you know, And These are the type of things that they're doing, screwing up when they don't need to screw up, when they know exactly how to do it. They just don't take the time to think about it. That's taking years off my life. It's I'm out there sweating my ass off. We're not doing anything Laying wrong. upside down, this fell and hit me in the head. It didn't hit you hard enough. Watch it, beak eyes. Watch it. So the 1970 to 1974 E-Body is basically the Barracuda and the Challenger. B-Body encompasses all the other versions of the mid-size lineup. The Charger, Roadrunner, Super B, Satellite, Coronet, and that kind of thing. It's a little bit bigger looking car, even though Overall, they're probably pretty close in size and weight. We're masking off this section right here on the air grabber um, because this little green section right here, we have to paint that part in black because this, uh, this decal got put on before we painted it. Are all the pieces for the air grabber detailed? Yes, they are. The ones we have. Let's yeah, talk everything to you, talk is to Josh. Sure everything is there. Don't blame everything on uh, Josh. If you're chiming off at me, I might just have to neutralize you. Wow. I'm from I the streets, really, man. I'm from I the streets. Really. Better eat your Wheaties before you decide to challenge yeah, that me. Girl yeah. Punch. Because I can not blast 140 pounds. I could easily beat you up. There's a reasonable chance I'm going to kick your spleen in. Remember the 71? The one you rolled off with a big dent in it? That one? We came out to Lone Pine Farms uh, to go on a hayride. We're gonna try to get a jump start on the Halloween season. Uh, last year, the mutants uh, ruined it for everybody, and we ended up carving rotten pumpkins like five days after Halloween. In an effort to make this a better year, I've taken control of that and have orchestrated this trip out to the farm. Today is my daughter's first time to go on a hayride and pick out a pumpkin. I'm very excited for that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get on the, the hayride truck, go out to the middle of the patch there, find a perfect pumpkin, for each one of us and uh, load it up and head back. Don't ever touch my here. butt. What are you talking no, about? No, I'm not going to play like the other ones do, okay? I'm not going to play like the other ones do. I'll bash your head in. Don't touch my butt. I didn't do anything. What's wrong with you? Try it and I'll bash your head in. That's a Burt Reynolds laugh from Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> yeah, it's mine, man. That's my pumpkin. Grab it. Which one? The one you, what one? What about this the one? The one you just had in your hand. This is a nice one. Oh, is that a nice one? That's a pretty nice one. Hey, if that's a nice one, give it to me. There's lots of nice ones, buddy. Get it for me. Come out here and get it. Mark's just been standing here on the uh, the brink of the, the pumpkin patch itself, just barking orders, making fun of everybody's pumpkin. Anything to look like Terminator. I, I, I'm gonna get a huge pumpkin. Man, you complain a lot. Get out there and find your pumpkin now. Go. I can always outrun you. You can, I can never still outrun, outrun you. You can't outrun me. You're 49 years you're old, 30, I can still outrun you're you. You're 75 years old and you couldn't outrun me if you tried. Sure I could. You couldn't. <laughs> He just winds me up, drives me nuts, and I fall for it every time. 
I beat him in the race. I beat him in the race. I can always beat him in the race. <laughs> Ooh. I know. No resistance. I need to shave my head and run you again. There's nothing blocking the wind. You know how much holdback there is on it? It'll only take a minute. Dissension. Yeah. Oh, it's my pumpkin, man. That's what I was talking about. This is my pumpkin. It is my pumpkin. It is a pumpkin. This is what a pumpkin looks like. Okay, number one, you should be able to find a pumpkin within three feet of the road, which I did. It should be well-rounded, perfectly symmetrical, geometrical, astromerical, and asymmetrical. I think I got a good pumpkin. Yeah. Last year, I just showed up and the pumpkins were there. Oh, of course, I got the best pumpkin. We were looking for one that looked like Mark as a child, as a baby. And if you look at Mark's baby picture and you look at this, you'll see a lot of resemblance here. My wife and I and Emma got the best pumpkins. We got a little tiny one that represents her. We got a pretty one that represents my wife. And then I got a tall, huge, big one that represents me. I guess so. <laughs> We're all farmers deep at heart, I think. This is good. This is God's country here. Good, rich soil. You know, what could be better than this? Throughout the course of my job and getting the cars done and the temper flaring and the fit throwing, I am blessed in as much as I get to do what I want for a living. In this case, we could take time out of the middle of the week, round up the families, go out and have a really terrific day at the pumpkin patch and build some memories that'll last a lifetime. I'd say that makes me pretty lucky. Today we got the carburetors in from Holly, the replacement, original replacement carburetors for the 71 Charger six pack. So we got to get the old tape. We always tape off the top of the plenum so the intake manifold so we don't get paint and grime down in there. After that, I've got to go over and put the right hand and the left hand doors together because uh, Legendary Interior showed up today with the upper door trim panels I've been waiting about four weeks for. Darren's not here today, so I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Maybe that's why we're gonna get a lot done. This is so cool. So we should have two outboard carburetors and one inboard. You can tell the difference between them. One has an idle circuit, and the other two don't. That beauty, huh? Showing Josh the Holly carburetors and what to look for and to be able to tell the difference between an original one or the reproduction one, those are important things, no doubt about it. And he is starting to really understand how to find one, know what it's off of, and if it's correct for a car. Vacuum seal you were talking about? It's, it's a vacuum operated secondary outboard carburetor. So that's a vacuum diaphragm right there. A vacuum diaphragm, and these are for the outer? Uh-huh, those okay. are the outboards. And this would be the? That is the main center. Main center. Yep. Holly has a complete reconditioning department. So even though these are very functional service replacement carburetors and, and basically in appearance they look the same, they're not identical to the original ones. Things like these bolts right here, they're originally a flat uh, pan head type screw that goes in there and there's some other subtle changes. So I have the original carburetors for this car that need to be completely reconditioned. Yeah. So that's part of their service too. So I want to put our three carburetors that are going back that are the correct numbers matching ones, send those to Holly. They can rebuild them send him back and we'll just send him with the car with the owner. It's equally important for him to know why that's cool. And, and part of my heritage that I'm gonna, if I'm gonna pass the torch on to him, he needs to know these are the things that we did for fun, that uh, multiple carburetors always meant big horsepower. All the little things that we kind of took for granted growing up, he hasn't had an opportunity to see. You should always be able to just put one in by hand. If I find you with an impact gun driving one in, there's a reasonable chance I'm gonna kick your spleen in. You know what I'm saying? That's understandable. After we had the carburetors installed on the engine, it was time to install the coil. Now, the coil on a six-pack engine goes in a different location geometrically than it does on a regular engine. What color is that wire right there? It's brown. Okay, what color is that one right that there? That is black and with a gray trim. They call it a tracer, this color, mm -hmm. whatever color that is. So it's got a gray tracer in it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the brown is going to go to the positive side of the coil, which is the battery side. So since that wire is longer, right? 
we want to put this coil in position where that's up higher. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. everything re reaches like it should. Now that the carburetors are on and I'm out of things that I can put on, I'm gonna move on to the door trim panel and start putting the door together. So I'm putting the relay rod in the door right now that connects the inside pull handle to the latch mechanism so that it'll actually, when you pull on the handle, you can actually open the door up. Stupid. Shut your lurch face. Royal's an idiot. You think you're so smart standing it does. back there? So everybody gets a little tense this time. We're actually um, getting quite a bit done. Royal's working on the kickdown linkage, and Mark and I are working on the uh, the fuel lines on the carburetor. Here are the fuel inlets. And usually, no matter how tight you get these, as soon as you start it, it starts puking gas everywhere. You have to go back and tighten them some more. We're having some difficulty with the transmission kickdown linkage. The kickdown linkage tells the transmission at what throttle position to kick it down into second gear. Is there an adapter plate in there or something? I don't understand why that faces that way. The bracket that came with the linkage doesn't seem to be facing the right way. It's, it's way off. Something don't look right. Now, he began to get frustrated and cuss like he does. I felt the need to go over there and help him out, save the day, and kind of explain to him what my theory was. Royal's an idiot. Don't understand why that thing's angled. I really don't. That's driving me nuts. Why is my throttle bracket pointed like that, trying to send the throttle cable up to the right-hand headlight? That's stupid. Um, and I'm unhappy about it, and I want to bash somebody's head in because it's an aftermarket part. I think when they stamped it, it was like this, and as soon as they stamped it, it went like that. I'm just gonna try to find a used or an NOS one. It stands for new old stock, and I'll just send it with the car when the car goes, but for now, I gotta get the carburetors up, hooked up, the secondary linkage hooked up, and get this thing where it'll run and drive under its own power, because we're just playing out of time. So while Royal was doing the final assembly of the interior trim panels, Josh and I were working on the final touches for the air grabber system. You have to have the pin installed in the actual door on the hood to be able to make it work. God, why won't you hold the light on what I'm working on? Well, maybe you You have to reach way up inside there, put the circlip over the end of the pin so that the door will function normally. Ooh. That's your fault, you How f was that my fault? Because I'm, I'm sitting apart. there, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get the light past yeah, my it's eyeball. All my fault. Well, I put it on because you won't just hold the damn light. Yeah. Mark says it's my fault for not holding the light steady, which my hand was pretty steady. Clamp fell because you won't hold the light. The That's clamp why fell the because clamp I won't hold the light. Was I holding the clamp, Mark? You were holding the light on a spider's nest up in here. Yeah, because you're that weird bug person. You're that bug man. You know bug man? He, he sees it. <laughs> he sees something. He sees something like a bug or a slug or, or a worm, and he, and he picks at it. He usually has a stick. He looks at me, and he thinks about it, and he, and he wonders about it. When all the time you should be holding the light on the flip. Hold the light on the flip. No, you creep. It's a pain in the ass. But if you don't do it, then the pin will fall back out, which is what these guys would love nothing more. And then you'd have an air grabber door flopping like that in the breeze when you're going down the freeway at 100 miles an hour. Here, do you want me to reach up there with my right hand? Do you think you can put that in there? I, you know what? Do you understand you have to have over 9,000 pounds of pressure on this? I think I got it. Did you really? Yeah. Whoa. Okay, there's a clip one. Nice work. Oh, yeah! The first time now, he's worked with me for almost two years. The very first time ever, and, and I'd like to shout out at you, Josh, he did something right. Having Mark tell me that I did something right is like once in a blue moon. This could be the start of something really great. You did it, boss, you did it. You the man. Why don't you work on getting the hood open 
and we need to put these on today. So I'm getting ready to put the uh, Dodge Ram Charger emblems on the side of the air grabber for the 71 Charger. Uh, if you had a Dodge version, it was called a Ram Charger hood, so you got the really cool Ram Charger decals with the B. And if you had a Plymouth version, like a Roadrunner, it would be called a air grabber hood. And the air grabber hood had a sticker that was very similar shaped, except it was a shark with its mouth open with really with all of its little teeth like it was gonna chomp down on something. But they're a little tricky to put on. I'm gonna hope Darren doesn't bug me while I do it. Good thing I had my Wheaties. It's like full bore right there. It's up all the way right there. Okay, let go. Thanks, that was good too. Coolest cars in the world right there. Nobody else did anything cooler. So cool. Only Mopar, baby, only Mopar. <laughs> there it goes. Ain't nobody made nothing cooler. Ain't nobody made nothing cooler. Look at that, that is awesome. Here's what I need. There's oil in there. I'd like to put the oil in this hole right here. Confirmed. Okay, you can do that. And then I'd like to make sure that the petcock is closed on the radiator and add the gallon of antifreeze that's in there. After I prime the engine, I want to I want to put the battery in it and crank the engine over a little bit, and then I want to find top dead center of the compression strokes so that we can set up where the distributor What's goes. The number one in. plug pulled out then. The what? Number one plug will need eventually to be pulled out. Yes, it is. Very good, Darren. Josh, why don't you hop down and I'll tell you what to do, buddy. While I had the guys installing all the fluids, I was able to go over and tear apart the original distributor for that motor. I was amazed that I was able to go down to Napa and actually buy the original dual point setup and condenser for a 1970 Presto Light dual point distributor. One of the things that bothers me probably the very most is a stupid looking human being. Josh comes in looking like, like a 1971's wrestler. I mean, and that's exactly what I thought. I'm looking at him and I'm thinking it's Portland Wrestling all over again. What did probably? you do, Google Dutch Savage Portland Wrestling to come up with that <laughs> beard cut, dude? I like it. So Darren and Mark are picking on me today because of my facial hair. Have you guys looked in the mirror lately? I grew up on wrestling. Mark grew up on wrestling and Darren grew up on wrestling. The first thing that Mark says, hey look, it's Dutch Savage. If they keep calling me Dutch Savage, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put somebody in a sleeper hold. I've got Darren in my sights. I actually think I'm gonna have to go shave just so that we can get something done today. Before you can start the engine, you have to install all the fluids such as transmission fluid, rear axle grease, motor oil, antifreeze. Uh, it, it's very important that you take a lot of time on a freshly detailed OE engine compartment to make sure that you don't have any spillage. Oh, Darren! Some water in These it. These parts are so small, no, I've got to have a, we'll a have small pick set. Up. Do one of you idiots have it? We'll have to clean it up, what? okay. Oh, we had a little spillage over here. God dang it. I thought of all the things to do to the car, it was this or air up the tires. <laughs> one of the hardest things to do on these old cars that require the Prestolite dual point distributors is to rebuild them. Why do you reckon it is that I'm the only guy in the whole place that can set up a dual point distributor? No answers? Yeah. I'll tell you why, because I'm the only guy in the place with an IQ over room temperature. There's two sets of points in them. They have to be set up specifically to open and close at a particular time. And every second, every hundredth or millionth of a second that they don't open or close at the exact amount of time, you lose power and performance and gas mileage. Yeah, this is the breaker plate. This has to move. Two is things just like this stupid little clip. Wouldn't want to lose that. I didn't know it was a spring torsion clip, so as soon as I pushed it, it popped off, shot all over the inside, ping-ponged off the inside of my toolbox. Ah. Ah. Did anybody hear that? Oh, I'm not gonna find that. And I just got super lucky. But see, see I was careful though, looking for it. Uh, Bobo the circus monkey and his partner up front that just managed to pour water all over the ground, they wouldn't have. They'd have come in through here like the Tasmanian devil, ripped everything out, thrown it on the ground, said it's not there. That's why I'm doing the dual point distributor. That is why.
So I got to go get my hair cut, Tweedledum. I just just now forgot. I got like three o'clock. I got to be over there. So you know you're balding. I'm sorry. You're balding. You're balding. Not to be rude, but I'm just letting you know. You know, I was kind of nice about the the weird pork chop thing, the Dutch savage looking thing. I didn't point out the fact that you've got, and I, and I don't mean this bad, but you got challenge lips. You know, like Sylvester Stallone. But when he screams out for like Adrian, the whole left side droops down like a right. stroke hit though. <laughs> I may have his lips, but you have his eyes. I may have his eyes. A lot of women happen to think these are very sexy <laughs> eyes. So do me a favor while I'm gone, I'm gonna take my bald head over and have the sides trimmed like an old man from the circus, okay? <laughs> In the meantime, I want you to make sure that the power steering pump is ready to go back on the car, because I'd like, once again, like I said at eight this morning, to start the car. That'd be great. I give up, dude. I'm shaving. Do you think you're so smart standing back there? It does! Hey, buddy. And I can hear it running already. Ow! Gosh, we gotta find some tools. They've got, uh, and the monkeys have got the tools scattered. I don't know which one. I'm using a woman's razor. You know why? Because these are the most sensitive razors I have ever used in my life. Come on, buddy. We need in there. Well, hang on. It's like unlocked. Why did you shave your beard off? Thought it looked good. I think you should have left it on there. What? No, why did what you, about that? Why did you take a shave it off? We Don't, all told you we liked dude. it. We said we liked it. Oh, what is wrong? Yeah, why did you shave it off? <laughs> hey, can we kill the breaker in there for the light? Let's go see how pretty boy is doing now. I'm actually the good one. Who's the only one trying to do stuff here? Mark's getting a haircut or getting a manicure, a pedicure, something, getting his toenails clipped. I don't know what he's doing. And Josh in the bathroom shaving with a girl's razor. Hey, buddy. God, he's like an annoying little child. Come on, buddy. We need to do some work. I'm a brand new man. Let's get to work. Are you for real? So I come back from getting my hair cut, expecting to see all the things done that I left them with. It's a little tight, huh? Darren? Hi, buddy. Where are you? Why isn't it on top dead center? I never got that far, buddy. What did you do? I, I've been gone 45 minutes. Well, let's see. Josh was shaving himself in the bathroom for an hour. I couldn't find him. You Could said something about shaving. Yeah, he was in there shaving. What'd you do? Well, I tried to do that. I did paint some brackets Whoa. and yeah, talking. Yeah, look at you. You're so stupid. Besides shaving your face, what did you get done on the power steering? Is it ready? Uh, almost. Oh, that's looking better though, huh? Hey, hey, go to work, okay? I've, I can't keep saying it over and over again. Well, who went and got their hair cut? My hair grows on company time. I'm gonna cut it on company time. <laughs> All right? Oh, really? Now, what I would highly Facial recommend you do, do is <laughs> shut your lurch face and you, your, your busted down old man face, and go to work. We made some really good progress on Mark and Elena's 1970 Cuda. Uh, since they dropped it off, we had it dipped. Uh, we've painted the engine compartment, fixed the little rust holes that were in it, and got all the rusted sheet metal uh, removed from it. I thought this was a really good time. I know that they had had a bad experience uh, at the prior shop, so I wanted to take this opportunity for them to come down and kind of get their batteries charged again. Mark invited us down here this week to uh, take a look at the car, see what the progress is from the time that we had dropped it off. Uh, like I said last time we were down here, you know, the car was the rust bucket that it was, you know. I can hardly wait to see the car. I'm excited. He's excited. I'm really, He's excited, really excited, excited to see excited. it. Oh my there you God. Go. Oh, oh, it's starting to look like a car. This wow. is insane. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's a little stunning because okay, hold on a second. I gotta look at I gotta look at the color. I think it looks beautiful. Uh, I love I love the paint. I really do. Yeah, so that's the original FE5. I matched it to a door I have out back. I always do that just to make sure because there's a lot of different colors out there and a lot of different shades, but the reason I use the PPG exactly specifically is because it's the same stuff I was painted in in 1970. And I still love going out because I did. Matched it up to an original 1970 door jam that had never seen the sunlight. And there's your Rally Red. Only, wow. only PPG. You're gonna stand out all right. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. 
It's gorgeous. And I can hear it running already. <laughs> Body work has progressed a lot uh, further than I anticipated. I don't think it's secondary damage as much, but I think the car, the bumper goes oh, here. Okay. Yeah, I think it was a SWAT like that, which is why this is still in really nice shape. Instead of the whole thing being caved in and hammered back out, this panel really hasn't, there's no evidence this thing's been caved in at all, which is great. Wow. Darren and me did a 71. Remember the 71? The one you rolled off with a big dent in it, that one? Okay. <laughs> That's why. This is cool. Now these are the little historical things that are neat. See that little mark right there? Yeah. That's factory. Somebody on the assembly line, that was his way of signing off on it. It was somebody's little signature saying, I've signed off on this apron, all the spot welds are good, it's the correct one for the car, ship it. Good to go. I love that kind of stuff. That's just so cool. It should look as original as it was in, as it was originally, and that's what Mark wants to do. So we love that. The poor dailies didn't even realize that their whole car at the other shop had been packed full of Bondo, when in reality, the panel should have been replaced. So we had all the panels that we had taken off the car out back in the graveyard. I pulled Mark and Elena out there and wanted them to see what shouldn't have happened that did happen. See how you got one metal here and one right. metal here? Yeah. I'm wondering if the metals... They riveted on. So they riveted this piece over the top of that Correct. piece? Oh, well, that's insane. That's why there's two pieces there and there's no weld line. Because they didn't weld it, they riveted it. And it's just another great example of what can happen when you don't have key quality people performing the restoration on your car. Definitely. They went over, see? They went oh, your original panels all the way down to here. That's why you don't see it. His work is not a hack and patch. His is an actual, let's make it right. And um, I'm very happy that that's the kind of work I'm getting out of this shop here. I mean, you look at the cars and you know, the guys have done restores on them, but it's, right. they were done previously or- Maybe you know, a long time ago. A long time ago. They won't look the quality of this. I mean, just by looking at the work that you've been doing, uh, like you. I can tell already. Just looking at it, I can envision the car, you know, the complete as it's supposed to be from the factory, you know? So I'm very happy, very pleased with the, uh, the progress here. Thank you so much for coming down, dude. That's work, awesome. Bud. Yeah, having the dailies down and check out their car, I think, uh, did definitely serve to inspire them, as well as myself and the rest of the team, and uh, realize that uh, we are damn good at what we do. Okay, so you know, people can run around saying they're the best, they're the best, but uh, if you want to know who's the best, look into the eyes of your customers. You think you're so smart standing it does. back there? It took my breath away. It was really cool. Ew. You got nothing. There's no right turn signal. Oh, yeah, there is now. You dumb. Okay, I'm going to look for a left. Yeah. Once we had finished making all the electrical connections, it was time to do a systems check. So basically we run through all the lights to make sure that the headlights, turn signals, brake lights, side markers are all working. It ain't working, buddy. <laughs> some of the, I don't know what we're gonna do, some of those, um, Wire brackets go on, head, on the head bolts. The spark plug wire separator brackets hold the actual plastic separator that keep the spark plug wires from hitting things like the exhaust manifolds, getting caught up in the fan. So it kind of holds them in place and routes them to the necessary areas of the engine compartment. Take it off, put it back on. I don't know if we can get to it already there with the exhaust manifold and thing there in the way. Oh God. So while I'm doing the systems check, which is perfect by the way, uh, Darren squirrels up to me and says, hey buddy, you're never gonna believe this. Uh, I forgot to put the brackets back on the engine like you told me to in the beginning. Sorry, buddy. So the next time that I tell you to put the brackets on the motor, because they have to be in the motor before the motor goes in the car, and you don't do it, I'm, going, I'm just gonna do something really bad physically what? Like to what? you. There's a reasonable chance I'll slug you okay. or rip your hair out by its roots. All right. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Right. So in my mind, whenever I hear I'm sorry from one of the idiots, all that translates to is I'm gonna work all night fixing the problem. <laughs> I hate his guts. I wish he'd oh he die a fiery death. It's like that movie with the snakes on the plane. In the end, of course, uh, I'm a hero. Uh, we get it done. If I hit my finger again, I'm going to slug somebody in the face. 
and the payoff is the car can still be started the next day out in the shop. Where does the cooler bolt on to? The cooler. The cooler. Cooler. I bet it would go right here. I bet it goes back here, but that's okay, just Okay, I don't know, I'm just guessing. Okay, well to answer Are your you question. It on? Yes, it does. God, my daughter was so beautiful, she could have had anything. I heard that. If you hear everything, you freak, bring me the bolts that hold the brackets to the power steering pump. That quieted you up, didn't it, Lurch? What? I need the bolts to the power <laughs> steering pump to hold the brackets to the pump. What? <laughs> <laughs> We finally got all the pieces on the motor and the transmission, all the lines are hooked up, everything is plumbed out, wires are in, distributors in, carburetors, linkage, everything's hooked up, the transmission fluid and power steering fluid, since they tend to leak until it warms up a little bit, I want those out in the shop, and that's where we're gonna do the startup. Fire days, we call them, that's the day we fire the car off for the first time, they're always the most stressful. There's a hundred things to do to get ready to start one of these cars, so everybody gets a little tense this time. It'll be worth it here, we'll get the car rolled out and hopefully it'll start right up, usually it does when I do something, so. Darren, you leaning on the fender doesn't add any pushing ability at I've all. I've got my hand on the bumper. Are you pushing though? Well, I'll start watching. <laughs> So where are we at? This time I want to avoid what happened last time. It was Darren or Royal or, or Lurch's job to make sure that the antifreeze was full and it didn't. It got low, it overheated, Darren got burned on his back, started crying like a little girl. So we're gonna try to avoid that this time. Let's see what we can do here. Fire <laughs> Need more gas. You missed an exhaust? I'm sorry, what was your question? You said it needs more gas. No. Royal, what'd you say? Don't we run an exhaust no. leak? How about it needs a little more timing? In this case, it wasn't starting like it was supposed to. It sounded to me a little bit like it was missing timing. It's gas, isn't it? Maybe the battery. Gas. You think you're so smart standing it does. back there? You think you're so smart standing back there shouting no, out what everybody gas. knows? No. We're just not shouting it, it out. I it want out. it to breathe on its own. Is that okay? okay. Is that okay? Can we pull it back out? No, I don't want to pull it back out. Is it pumping gas yet? But it didn't need more gas. Oh, <laughs> I'll put what I want in it. I'll put what I want in it. I'll put what I want in it. <laughs> it's gonna go bang. Yeah. It doesn't go bang. It's not a shot. It's gonna go bang. It is not getting fuel up there yet. So after figuring out that it needed fuel, um, I was wondering why, since the fuel pump's new and all the lines are new, and then of course, voila, there it is, Darren's handiwork on the back. I guess when I asked Darren to put the fuel lines to the fuel tank, connect them, he probably figured I meant go home and watch the duck game. Uh-oh, they're not connected? Uh-uh. I wasn't told to hook them up. It's just something that got overlooked, that's all. Marcus wants to blame me. Just hate your guts. What do you need? I just wish he was dead. <laughs> let's, get her, let's get her done, come on. I ended up doing the work myself because I knew if I did it right then, it'd be done and done right. Uh, I was able to make all the final connections where it was pumping fuel and boom. I mean, he said, I told you you needed more gas. All along, needed more gas. More gas. It did. And you call, you kept calling me crazy bad names. I said, it needs more gas. Go, man, go. You got some issues. Go, man, go. Yeah. Yeah.
a bad deal? No. I've been roiled. What happened now? All over the ground, gas. Get a rag and wipe it up. So while it was running at, at the master's hand and running very well, boom, another problem surfaces. Power steering, okay. power steering, power steering, power Let's steering. Now. It's sucking air, it's sucking air. So while I was enjoying hearing the carburetors open up and the engine run so good, bam! Power steering fluid straight up out of the vent. So despite the okay. fuel line problems, the power steering problems, the messes, the cleanups, the blaming, we got the car running great. This is the first time it's ran under its own power since 1975. Ran really well. It was a long day, but the payoff was pretty great. It was really good to hear the engine run. The engine sounds fine. We just got a few little problems. The transmission shifts good. I don't have any weird leaks except for Darren's transmission pan that he didn't tighten down when I asked him to. Anybody that doesn't think you can have a gas leak, an oil leak, a water leak, has really never worked on very many cars. Well, this is the first time I've actually ever heard a 440 six pack car start up. And I mean, it was just, it took my breath away. It was really cool. It's an enigma wrapped inside a riddle, toasted up in a Pop-Tart with, with crazy on top, crazy frosting. I think it's counseling is starting to help, but I'm really not quite sure that it, it's, it's been worthwhile. I think we had a pretty darn good week. The 71 Charger is nearly ready to get the final assembly on it and off to the owner. Uh, we connected the N96 air grabber system, which works flawlessly, of course, which I think is still one of the... You didn't do anything. Me and Josh put that together, remember? You just threw the instructions that it said here. Doesn't matter. Bottom line is, air grabber works great. One of the coolest things, I think, is the N96 air grabber on the 71 and 72 B bodies. And Mark and Elena Daly came down to check the progress on their 70 Cuda 383 automatic FE5 rally red car. Yeah, they're very happy with the way it looks. Love the color, and why wouldn't they? Who makes the number one color in the world on Chrysler's? PPG. PPG, that's right. Pittsburgh Paint and Glass. Is that the, what DB, it for? the DBC system, that's right. They were painting the cars back in 1970. Did you actually see the episode? Were you there? The 71 Charger, we installed how many CFM Holly carburetors? 1350. 1350 CFM of replica Holly carburetors on there, which when that thing started up, there's just nothing. That's some ferocious stuff right there. That's it moving air. Just right into the air cleaners. There's so much. Didn't Let's almost suck there. us into anything, but, oh. but it sounded good, okay? Uh, we did a systems check on it, and everything worked out great. All the lights working, heater working, radio working. Uh, that's because I mostly pioneered the electrical portion of it, but it doesn't matter. Got the door panels on it. Got the door trim panels on it. Part of the interior is put together, that's right. Um, had a few problems getting it started, but ultimately we did get it running. What was wrong with why it wouldn't start? We've had some timing issues and we weren't getting gas, which was the main issue. Mm, because you guys forgot to hook up the hoses that go from the steel lines of the car over to the gas tank. I believe so, that was whirling. And then gosh. when you did hook them up, you didn't put the clamps on them, so then they puked all over the place. But, Supermark to the rescue, uh, got it running and uh, put it in gear, ran it through the gears. Everything seems to be working good. Rear end sounds good, so. And I think, you know, it's always a victory on top of the cars, on top of the people, on top of the tools, on top of all that stuff. Just the fact that I haven't actually split your head open with a mall, <laughs> you know? So that's, you gotta be stoked you made it another week on the planet. The neighbors missing their chickens? I know what your Cause I think that I know where they're at a lot of times. They look like they've been digging under your eyes, you know, like. Crow's feet, you know, marks. Are you crying? I'm not crying. Well, look, my eyes are watering because it's you're crying. the heat from the light. Grown man crying. What's the deal, buddy?